All right, so now I can see his line. It's 127.95 for Pop, you have a good weekend. Okay. This might be 70, it might be 50, I'll, I'll let you know as we get closer, okay? Pop, one minute, 2 a white drop. Solid, Pop, you have a good weekend. All right, uh, release point and escape, if you'd go, pilot. Uh, 570, coming at you. Okay, I'm gonna roll into him. Okay, he looks like he's gonna... One little dog leg turn to the right, parallel the fire line. Okay, no snags, looks good. Okay, you see the retard in there? At the end yep. of the trees? Yep. Okay, I'm gonna kick it just slightly right as we come in. Okay, ready? 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 Drop. Altitude. Altitude. Altitude, 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 altitude. Roger. Okay. Let's get out of here. Altitude. Okay. His end of this is It's Wednesday the 25th of April. This is Juan Brown with a special report with for the Blanco Lurio Channel and the Grass Valley Union newspaper. I got special permission today to crawl around the base here at McClellan and get an update on the spring training that's going on with the C-130s, the MAFS program from the different Air National Guard and Reserve units that support this mission. It's a special one week long training program this week at McClellan Air Force Base where all the four different Guard and Reserve units that support the MAFs are taken this week off to get trained up and qualified and current for this year's firefighting mission. There are four different units in the United States that are firefighting qualified that have the modular airborne fire, firefighting system in their C-130s. Each unit has two dedicated aircraft, so there's a total of eight modified C-130s that can do the MAFS mission nationwide. Again, these eight aircraft only supplement the contract firefighters when there is a need, when those resources are stressed too thin. Brand new to the scene, this will be their beginning their third year, is my old unit, the Nevada Air National Guard out of Reno, Nevada, flying H-3s. The Wyoming National Guard out of Cheyenne, flying also H-3s. The reserve unit out of Colorado, flying H-3s, and the Channel Island Guard, yeah, Air National Guard unit, California Air National Guard, Channel Islands, the Hollywood Guard. Of course, Hollywood, they've got the new J model C-130s. Again, each unit has two aircraft dedicated to the mission for a total of eight. Here at McClellan, these MAFS guys are able to coordinate with the Forest Service and CAL FIRE and the lead plane aircraft that are required to get this training done. Each drop that is done by a C-130 is preceded by a lead aircraft. The lead aircraft is typically a King Air, used to be Beechcraft Barons, um, and th the lead pilot's job, that's a single pilot operation, is to coordinate the air resources over the forest fire, collect the air tankers, and bring them in one at a time and lead them on the drop. A typical C-130 drop will begin with a show me run by the lead plane and then perhaps a couple of dry runs and then the actual runs down the canyon. On these training missions in order to get everybody trained up and qualified, each sortie each time they leave McClellan and come back they may do as many as nine runs down the canyon. 
Here at McClellan, uh, yesterday, day one, they ran 40 sorties and got 100 drops in. Again, each drop is still done at about 150 feet above the foliage and 120 knots. To get 120 knots out of the C-130, that means full flaps gear up. With the modular firefighting system, they're the C-130s are able to carry 3,000 gallons of retardant and do coverage levels from anywhere from four to coverage level eight. That's a very heavy coverage level, especially for a modular system. To get all this training done here in Northern California, folks here have coordinated with the Tahoe National Forest and the Shasta T, Shasta Trinity National Forest up outside of Redding. So there's two different general areas that they're dropping the water, that's all they're practicing with is water on these practice runs. But each area, the, for example, in the Tahoe National Forest, there may be a half a dozen or more spots where they can change up the game and get the guys some different, more realistic and more increasingly challenging training in some of the remote canyon areas on both the Tahoe National Forest and the Shasta T, Shasta Trinity. And new news here at McClellan Air Force Base, for years McClellan has, well, it's been the depot level maintenance in the home for DynCor and uh, CAL FIRE's firefighting fleet of aircraft. And for years, McClellan has been a temporary air tanker base. Finally this year, the funding has made it official. McClellan is a permanent air tanker base. They've got 100,000 gallons of retardant ready to go. They're able to load some of these large tankers in as quick as 20 minutes. Five different pits, one small pit for S2s, four larger pit pits for the large air tankers. As you know from last year's big fire bust here in California, McClellan was a very busy base. I had an opportunity to speak with uh, Nevada Air National Guard's operations officer, Tony McAbee. Yeah, Tony's an ops officer now. About what it takes to get a unit stood up to do MAF's, uh, the MAF's mission. First off, um, when they get the call to activate, they've got a requirement to be able to be on the scene within 48 hours. That means you've got to get the MAFS equipment installed in the aircraft, which takes a couple of hours, and then get your crews together and get them deployed within 48 hours. Because remember, when the when there's no fires going on, the MAFS, the modular unit is outside of the aircraft and the C-130 is being used for regular C-130 type missions. By the way, each of these pilots that are MAFS qualified, only the most experienced pilots get to be into the MAFS program. And each pilot is still fully TAC qualified. That means he's still got all of his requirements to be a uh, fully TAC qualified low level C-130 driver, plus the MAFS requirements on top of that. As a training officer, that means, or even as a pilot or a reservist, a part-timer, you've got over almost 180 different requirements that so you've got to be current and qualified to maintain as a C-130 pilot and a C-130 MAFS pilot. Before you can qualify as aircraft commander on the C-130, you need a minimum of two seasons of work and 15 drops over a live fire. All this training doesn't necessarily count towards your advancement towards aircraft commander. This training this spring gets you current and qualified to fly the mission, but in order to advance to aircraft commander, you got to get two full seasons of firefighting plus 15 live drops. And in order to become an instructor pilot, a MAFS instructor pilot in a C-130, you need four seasons experience and over 60 drops on a live fire. So that means when you're a brand new unit, it's going to be a four-year process minimum before you become fully autonomous and no longer have to rely on other units to help get your unit stood up. In order to man your two MAFS aircraft, each unit is required to have 10 current and qualified crews. What's a crew on these aircraft? On the H3s, it's a minimum of six, a six man crew, two pilots, two loadmasters, an engineer, and a loadmaster. Two, four, six, right? Did I do that right? On the Js, you only need two pilots and two loadmasters, a four man crew. So let's go out on the line and take a look at some of these aircraft. So this is one of the modular, airborne modular systems. Right now it's in a state of disrepair, but 
3,000 gallons pressurized system roll in or out of the aircraft. This is what allows the aircraft to be truly modular, where you can use the aircraft for firefighting during the season and regular cargo hauling the rest of the season. It takes about an hour or two to move this system in and out of the aircraft. This is the pintle system out the left paratroop door that allows the, uh, the discharge of the retardant up to coverage level 8, pressurized to 90 PSI, 3,000 gallons of retardant. In the event of a takeoff emergency, if you were to lose an engine, you can dump this load in as quick as 30 seconds. A glass model, uh, the J model, the glass cockpit. I don't recognize anything here. It looks like a bunch of iPads, but <laughs> regardless, here is your high-tech drop system that the co-pilot's operating, working with basically a trigger system, dropping on the lead aircraft's command. C-130J model. This is the lead plane that the Forest Service is using, a uh, typical lead plane. This is the King Air. This is the newest lead plane in the entire fleet. Brand new King Air. So a lead plane pilot is basically busier than a one-legged man in a shit shooting contest because he's typically a single pilot operation. Sometimes he's got uh, an ACM module where he'll have a second air attack officer helping him out, but typically a lead plane is one pilot. And some of the Unique things that make a aircraft a lead plane pilot is the radios. This is a typical example, no less than six radios. Six, uh, three aircraft radios up here where you do your primarily air to air stuff or airplane stuff. But then down here, you've got three more FM radios to cover air to air, air to ground and national and guard and all these, all these other different frequencies. So you're dealing with a lot of communications as a lead plane pilot and keeping everybody out of the dirt. The latest, the King Air, U.S. Forest Service lead plane. Well, I learned a lot today about the MAFS mission, what it takes to become a MAFS qualified pilot and get a guard or reserve unit up to speed to take on the MAFS mission. And I hope you did too. See you here.